impressed with my claps. Hey loves, hey loves, hey loves. My name is YM Vaughn. I also go by Y. And this is another incredible episode of Raise It Up Y, the podcast. We're coming at you the last Thursday, October 2023 in an episode we have named Who Do You Love? Are You For Sure? Yeah. It'll just be Who Do You Love? All right. That's for all of the people who grew up like me. If you are more familiar with younger music, you might say, bitch, who do you love? Hey, who do you love? <laughs> so, and that just goes to show you the difference between like old school hip hop and young hip hop. Who do you love? Are you for sure? Bitch, who do you love? Like, oh, oh, I guess you, I guess. I'm sorry, you. <laughs> Massa, don't hit me no more. Okay, no, I'm back. Um, Again, my name is Yann Vaughn. I also go by Y. This is Raise It Up Why the podcast. Raise It Up Why the podcast is where OGs kick game to real ones only. We do this using non-corny positivity from the West Coast straight on out to the world and we utilize hip hop culture because that's our common language over here. We are home to love culture. Love culture is a diverse bunch of happy mofos that are linked by three things. One, they listen to this podcast. They ground themselves in listening to this podcast and getting great rocket fuel to go up on these hoes with. Number two, it's a long story. If you don't know what that means, just, just keep rocking with the pod, keep rocking with the culture. Um, number two, we do do good for no good reason on and off social media. Number three, love culture is unified by leading and leaving all interactions with red blooded humans with love and respect. If you ever come to a love lounge, which we do live on social media platforms across the board, um, we're losing one this month. Dang it, Amazon. Amp. Thank you for everything that you gave us. We could lament over the past, or we could feel thankful for what we had. And I feel thankful for the community that I've built, the love culture that was built over on you guys' side. Um, shit, last episode, we shouted out one of the creators who passed away in the AMP community, E-Man 31. And we talked about how his family is still held up on the app with all of the creators who've had the pleasure of meeting one another and everybody who does shows like some people took over doing gospel shows because he was like a gospel guy uh some people have taken over doing gospel shows in honor of e-man 31 me personally he would always come in my room and say just showing love in these amp streets and he would just like give your room some some love give it a like give it some claps give it some interaction in the chat maybe call in just to make sure that your room had some engagement as well so now I find myself doing that in lieu of what he would do even if I didn't think I was going on the app that day uh amp if you are not aware at this point, uh, most of you will see this in November and it will already have been dwindled down. At least that's the verbiage that they were using on their site. Uh, one of our love lounges is down. However, where a door is closed in my world, two, three more open plus a window. Hello. So I'm looking forward to wherever... Um, God is pressing me to go, not pressing me, is is welcoming me to go next. No, no, no force, actually. Um, 
So I'm looking forward to what that looks like. However, we lead and leave all interactions with red-blooded humans with love and respect. That's what love culture does. It's the third thing that unifies all of us outside of doing good for no good reason and uh, rooting and grounding ourselves in the information that comes through these podcasts of Raise It Up Why. Um, one thing I really like about uh, the fact that we treat all red-blooded humans with love and respect is when you're in love culture, we encourage that you remove your other. Um, I say your other because in mainstream interactions, we might wear our blackness, our sexuality, our gender, our uh, pronoun, our whatever we do. We herald those things because those are things that we feel or think qualify who we are. Um, in love culture, we're way more concerned about what vibration you choose to resonate on that day. Recognizing that you can have a different ability, which is what some other people call disabilities, but in love culture, we call different abilities. You can have a different ability and have decided, you know what, I'm going to align myself with the vibration of destruction and you can hurt people even if you possess a, dis a different ability. Um, you can be an individual that judges other people and come from the LGBTQ plus community where unfortunately a lot of people get judged unfairly. But just because you come from a minority in mainstream society doesn't negate the possibility that you could become your own oppressor. You could become the exact thing you despise about other people. And every single one of us, myself included, Onet included, Suzy Q, inclu everyone possesses the capability to resonate lowly in shame and guilt and fear and anger and apathy. Everybody has the capability to do those things. So we're concerned in love culture about where you decide to resonate. What vibration have you aligned yourself with that day? If you align yourself with love and respect, you probably belong to us. <laughs> you belong to love culture. And I don't care if you pray with your palms together or your palms facing up. I don't care if you pray five times a day or never at all. Whatever you as a human do, if you decide to be loving, respectful, kind, good, gentle, self-controlling, faithful, the things that are what we call in, uh, at least from a Christian background, the nine fruits of the spirit, lovable, joyous, peace, patience, kind, good, gentle, self-controlling, and faithful. If you're any of these things and all of these things, you probably belong to us. So I wanted to say that in case anybody is new here, uh, I'm sure as we continue to spread love culture, as we move to different apps, there's going to be a lot of people who might see this episode as an intro to who we are and what we do. So I wanted to take a little more time here in the intro to express my thankfulness for all of you. You might be watching this in November where this could be Thanksgiving that you're watching this. Um, and however you look at appreciation, Thanksgiving, whether you believe in like the holiday, the historical stuff or whatever, life is what you make it. Life is what you make it period. You can decide to every time there's a time to rejoice, find the reason to freedom fight. That's one side of life, man. Or you can also decide that when you have an opportunity, when you're giving an, when you're given an invitation to love, just take it. It's not deep. It's not challenging. It's not that challenging. I don't believe, but that's exactly what we're here to talk about in this episode today. Who do you love? Everybody want to talk about love, talk about relationship, talk about marriage, talk about who's doing what in celebrity marriages and whose relationship goals look like, fill in the blank. Everybody looking at a lot of other people to love and don't love themselves. What? Y'all knew that. Y'all knew where this was going. Um... In Raise It Up Why, we raise up your self-awareness, your vibration, and your capacity for love. And this episode is about to have a lot of the self-awareness. Uh, I already spoke about vibration. And your capacity for love is knowledge. And we plan to raise you up with a little bit of a high why from one of our students at 1500 Sound Academy, as well as 
a do I diddy that will kind of double as a break it down. Um, and we'll talk about that as, you know, coming up and everything. So like we always do about this time <laughs> when we were on the pharmacy, battle cat always had that as a sound bite. Like we always do about this time. And I did my favorite shit. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I am a trained therapist, non-traditionally practicing by being here on this podcast as an edutainer. Um, And one of the things that we do in the therapeutic world to make sure that we are actually in the space that we think we're in, inhabiting the space we think we're in, we ground. Grounding is a technique that separates you spatially, energetically, from wherever you were before you turned this podcast on to wherever you are now that you're here. And this is making sure that when your physical body came over here, you brought your mind, you brought your emotions, you brought all of you with you, all right? All right. Grounding. Take a moment to be here with me. Hear my voice. I want you to feel your feet. Wiggle your toes. Touch your nose. And you're just doing that to recognize that you are here with me. Breathe a breath in. Blow a breath out. Try that again in through your nose. Out through your mouth. And take a moment to own this. This is a miracle that we call life, that you are breathing and winning just by living this life, just by spending this time with my voice right now, you're investing into your betterment. And I'd like you to sit with that and feel proud and welcome again. Let's go up. All right, Love Culture is in the building. Y'all in the rocket with me? We rockets up on these hoes, right? Ho energy is low resonating energy that we don't fuck with well. And we don't want to ever feel a need to have to disconnect from our high vibration just to appease an individual at a low vibration. So in Love Culture, when we talk about non-corny positivity, we say things like hashtag rockets up on these hoes. And it's our way of being like, (laughs) I forgot who told me that the other day. Somebody just DM'd me. They said, you know, I say rockets up on these hoes whenever I get into a situation. I can't, I don't know if that was Chris Lee, love Chris Lee. Was it Miss O'Faith? I can't remember who it was, but they were like, yeah, people be acting, man, they be aligning themselves with some whole ass energy. And I'm like, listen, uh-uh, I got to rock it up on these hoes. I don't I don't deal with no negativity now. I d- I'm like, God bless you. Everyone who's watching and listening, thank you for your non-refundable time and energy. I said Chris Lee's name and love Chris Lee really, really enjoys when I say that phrase. And it's a real thing. I appreciate all of your listens on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Stitcher, everywhere that you're able to listen to podcasts. And I'm also very thankful for everybody on YouTube who gets to see the beautiful set design. Uh, One of our new loves from AMP, Clouded Chris is his name. He talked about our set design, he said, yo, your shit looks so fucking dope. I said, I can't take an ounce of credit. That is that is over here making some shit look well. And my baby girl at Cup of Sue, or we call her Susie Q in, in uh, 13 Presents, which is the company over here. But yes, I'm letting y'all know, if you like anything that I do, I am owned, no, 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 I am uh, bossed around by two of my former students, <laughs> current mentees, and uh, just two of my baby sisters, my best folks in life, uh, Onet underscore Ashe on Instagram, as well as Cup of Sue on Instagram. So bringing that up because speaking of Instagram and love lounges, we've been Really talking about stuff from the last pod, uh, we we've been having conversation about love, relationship, and marriage. 
Those are three different topics, by the way. All correlated, but definitely three different topics. Love, relationship, and marriage, right? All right, cool. The question of the Love Lounge on Love Tuesdays, every Tuesday on Instagram, at Wyanna, W-Y-A-N-N-A, we go live and have discussion in real time about um, different topics that come up here on the podcast. We just kind of comb through them to get the most of the gems that we can from a part of them. And we did a part two this past Tuesday and asked the question, if we recognize that one of the biggest reasons we as people don't engage in relationship at the marital level is because a lot of us feel scared. A lot of us feel fear. I, I did a small survey of whoever was in the Love Lounge in the last couple of uh, uh, weeks, and overwhelmingly, the response from loves and new people coming in just, you know, happened to stop by and just felt like participating. The response to why is marriage on the decline? Why do people have more of a challenge being committed in a relationship today? Why do people choose distractions over love? It's a, it's a choice. It's a choice. People may not know that they're making that choice, but it's a choice. Um, and overwhelmingly, the answer was fear. Now, fear of dot, dot, dot. Fear of rejection. Fear of being hurt. Fear of being wrong. Woo! That's an underestimated one. Motherfuckers would rather be right and alone than humble their spirit, have to be corrected in a relationship, and be in love. It's the wildest thing. We didn't get to go too far into it because we were going on to AMP. So, so we didn't stay at the conversation, but that's what we're coming through next. And that's why I wanted to bring it back up here on this pod so we could like, no, this is going to be a theme. Um, for your first segment, we're going to do a do I diddy. The do I diddy portion of this podcast, we have several segments in the pod and I choose just a couple of them to focus on each episode. Um, this episode, we're going to do a do I diddy, which is going to serve for our break it down. Yes, we are still in 50 years of hip hop. So even the episode title, Who Do You Love, takes it back to LL Cool J or if you know the YG song, you know, we're looking at how that phrase in hip hop has two different spaces now. Um, and the break it down is where we extract meaning from the already existing genius in hip hop culture. We're going to do that though, through a do I diddy. A do I diddy is when I present to you all original music, um, or from independent artists music in order to either highlight, share with you all, some dopeness, or like we're going to do today, really delve into a topic deeply. This do I did, he comes from one of my unreleased songs. I'm a songwriter, if you didn't know. Uh, Grammy Award nominated songwriter. Let me <laughs> qualify the fuck fi. Hello, on period, highlighter, underline it, red dot, Talk about me nice, huh? If you talk to me at all, catch me if you can. Find me if you don't. Fuck you me. Put some respect with a CK, huh? No diss to my, to my blue card. Hello? That's some real LA shit if you know why I said that. But anyways, check me out. Wendy and I were discussing some of the findings from my impromptu qualitative research studies in these recent love lounges and she brought up this song of mine this unreleased song of mine she said the words of that song are exactly why marriage is on the decline which means divorce rates are on the decline divorce rates are only on the decline because people are not getting married as often if you and Woo, I see there's so many things I want to say. I'm I'm this is a short episode today because I'm getting the fuck in and getting the fuck out. Listen, I'm black. It's it's late. 
<laughs> Hello? Um, listen. The song is called Hide. The chorus says, I'd rather hide from love than be inside of love and be deprived of love. I'd rather hide from love. That's that's the that's the chorus of the song. That's the hook. What the hook gonna be? Uh oh, I don't need no fucking hook on this beat. My bad. That's a, another hip hop reference. Let it me let me be. Um, but really the verses is where Wendy brought up a lot of the credence for why people hide away in fear from love. The first verse says. I'm my own girl living in my own world. I buy my own things, even got my own ring. A promise to myself that I'd never lose touch with who was inside. A problem with trust time and time again. Why have a man if he can't be my friend? I'd rather love from a distance, save a tenth of my pride. Hide. I'd rather hide from love than be inside of love and be deprived of love. I'd rather hide from love. That happens twice. Second verse. Rule number one, open your heart. Well, why play the game if you ain't down to start? Let them know, let them know. In the background say, I'd rather love who I am than be hurt in the end again. And if I'm going to play, then I got to play smart. Got to know the rules and the ways of my heart. And I'm taking my time. So when love comes to mind, I just hide, 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 hide. Oh, the little baby. I'm like thinking about this YN at 28 writing this song, right? Uh, but the reality is, like the bridge says, when you come to me thinking that I'm insecure or in a dream because I'm not with you or we're wondering why we're still friends no matter how nice you've been, don't want to fake or pretend I've got to keep it real. I really love where I am right now and I would love to settle down when it's right, when it's right. And a few things that come to mind when I think about that song, how, especially that second verse, if rule number one is open your heart, why play the game if you ain't down to start? If you're not down to open your heart, why are you in all of these relationships? With the background saying, I'd rather love who I am than be hurt in the end again. Let me stop right there. Here goes the vibe. We, in this current climate of today's, not L-U-V love culture, like our listenership, but the, the culture of love that's out there. I won't even miss uh, uh, pair it with us. Um, the culture of love that's out there is one that would rather pontificate about love than experience it make mistakes in it, and by way of making mistakes, actually learn the process of love. Hence, rule number one, if you want to experience this thing called love in a real way, open your heart. Well, why play the game if you ain't down to start? How many people in today's society are joining relationships with closed hearts, open legs, Keep it a stack. What are we doing? Open legs, closed hearts. You are literally only leaving room for lust. Lust, transaction, possession. Lust, because that's what we're giving, all right? The erotic side of love, which is a viable side of actual consummate love. Sternberg, what, what's old boy name? Sternberg's triangle. Uh, uh, bro. Robert Sternberg, if I'm not mistaken, or Steinberg. It's Steinberg, actually. Uh, uh, what's his name, Steinberg? Robert Steinberg. 
I don't have a whole computer right here. Please look it up for me on that. But um, Robert, either Sternberg or Steinberg, Triangle of Love, classifies all of the pieces of love as intimacy slash attraction, lust, uh, and like, you know, physical attraction, erotic love. It, what's his name? Steinberg? Stern Sternberg. If I'm not mistaken, Stern means star, auf Deutsch, und Berg means mountain. So it's like star mountain. Can you look and see? Was bedeutet Stern auf Deutsch is the question. What does Stern mean in German? Yes, I took German in high school and in a little bit in college. I live in Southern California, so while that sounds cool, it was I've done smarter things. <laughs> Everyone speaks Spanish, so I would have probably had a better time in Spanish. But German was easier, and Latin to me, but German. Um, I know Berg means mountain. Just check for Stern, S-T-E-R-N. That should be star. Uh, point being, if not only are we looking at attraction, Stern means star, can Wyann really... Re got to put some respect on my brains. I'm 41. I took German in 10th grade. I was 16, 15, 16. For me not to speak German that often, well, I took two years and let, let, let's keep it a stack. I took it sophomore and junior year, senior year. They took it away. I'm not even going to get into that because I'm not. Because we're keeping things positive. I forgot where I was. Hello. Ha, ha, ha. Yay. And then when I got to college, I took it again. And I was so thankful because it was a five-unit course. And I got a motherfucking A. I got the hot man. I'm her. Period. I am she. She is I and I am she. Talk to me nice. All right. I'm 30 minutes in. All right. So check me out. Attraction and like, erotic, you know, lust, that's two. The third corner of that triangle is commitment. We've talked about this on this tri on this podcast before, on this triad before, excuse me. We've talked about this on this podcast. Okay, all right, all right. Pacat, pacat. We have talked about this on this podcast, be the fuck for, all right? Um, when you stir all of those things in a big pot, you get this thing called consummate love, agape love in more spiritual realms. It encompasses the like factor, the love uh, erotic factor, and the commitment friendship factor, all those things in one. So when I say in today's society, we have closed hearts but open legs, which leads us to lust one another, lust is a piece of love transactionship is not a piece of that triangle and love ownership we be so concerned with where the fuck was you last night oh that's my man where who do you follow what what are you doing policing the person we're with the same person we wouldn't even open our hearts to why if you wouldn't open your hearts would you open your body Oh, you don't value your body like you value your heart? Oh, because physiologically we all have needs? Maybe? So if we all have needs and we're, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? Shit, you know, I got, you know, I, I, I like to get it in. I'm the, oh, okay. So once you close your, if you have a rock for a heart, and a pillow for a pussy. Hello. If you have a rock for a heart and a credit card of a dick, I'm not just putting this on one sex versus the other. This is consummate, like love. This goes for anyone who can love. That's all humans. If you start the game of love, breaking rule one, why do you think you'll win? at love. 
that becomes my question. Wendy took a course on intimacy. She could tell you guys about it. I am Wendy with an I on Instagram if you ever want to ask her about it. One of the things the instructor said that, that, that stuck with her the longest was, if you want to do intimacy and you don't want to hurt someone, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong game. Intimacy is not romantic. The definition of intimacy sums itself up in the word closeness. I'm intimate with my mentees, my angels in love culture. I'm intimate with love culture. Actually, TJ and I are romantic. The man of the love lounge, the man of love culture, he and I are romantically involved. I am intimate with Andre Mego, Soundtrack, Ninth Wonder, and Cash of Jamla Records. I'm very intimate with those men. They're probably my closest male companions. And all four of those individuals have TJ's number. When I go to North Carolina to record with Jamla Records, Soul Council, Ninth Wonder, and all of these individuals, I'm staying usually at the studio most of my time there. It's a den of men. Men with, who, with whom I have intimate, amazing friendships with. These are men that have prayed my mom out of hospitals. We have prayed their family members with well wishes into the earth to go back physically to where they came. We have hugged one another when times have been rough. We have celebrated Grammys and Grammy nominations. All of them have Grammys. I just, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm here I come. Ha, ha, ha. But um, we don't get more intimate. Blood couldn't make us closer, me and my brothers over at Jamla. TJ Wilkins and I are romantically intimate. He knows what the insides of all of this look and feel like. None of those other men do. None of them. Especially on a physical level. On an emotional, maybe like, you know, do you feel connected closeness? Yeah, sure, that's intimacy. But intimacy is not romance. You get me? So I want y'all to know today's version of hip hop culture is summed up in the title. Who do you love? When we're talking about the LL version of that song, who do you love? I want to last with you. Oh, you for sure. I do what I got to do. Who do you love? LL is talking about whining and dining a chick, trying to, trying to mack her down, trying to see if he can be in a relationship with her. YG is talking about, bitch, who do you love? It's showy. It's egoic. It's who do you worship almost? If you're not opening your heart for love, you are leaving either transactionship or worship. Honey, hey, 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 honey, hey, love, whoever you are listening, I don't care how you identify. This applies to all red-blooded humans. If you keep a rock in the place of your heart, you are either leaving room for pimp, ho, transactionship between you and a lover or you are looking to be worshipped by the person you're cosplaying having relationship with when we talk about why marriage is on the decline it's because relationship is on the standstill and a, a, I, I, I want all of us not to feel too cool for school my master's degree holding sister went to a intimacy and intimacy course in order to deepen her connections and experience love on a grander scale, on a big, big level. 
humbling one's spirit and oneself so that they can experience the breath of love, it's so worth it. It doesn't mean you're dumb. It doesn't mean that you missed out. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. You can do this while you're in a relationship, experiencing maybe some rocky times. There's Instagram accounts like under, uh, urban underscore counselor, one of the masterminds who's now doing more content about emotional intelligence. Zeb the third, Z E B T H E three R D. Zeb the third is an actual doctor in the world of therapy who makes and creates amazing content. Y'all always love when I share his content. Um, you have a lot of ways to learn your ways around love, which brings me to the latter half of that second verse. If I'm going to play, then I've got to play smart. I've got to learn the rules and the ways of my heart. But I'm taking my time so when love comes to mind, I just hide. I don't mind that y'all take y'all time for love. The only time I would have an issue with all of your taking your time is if it means you never start. If you're going to play the intimacy game, the closeness game, you are going to hurt some feelings. You might have to hurt some feelings to protect and stand up for your intimacy of self. And you have to know what those things called boundaries look like. We have episodes on boundaries and how to keep them with the masterminds. I want to say that was episode 41. I believe it was at the top of last year, the top of 2022. Um, I really suggest... On the, on the thumbnail, I have the love culture sweatshirt on. And my hair was like this, but it was in a part with my uh, curls down. Um, I believe that the episode it was. Uh, January 2022, I believe is when that episode was. My point being, I really encourage you all to peek around from whatever distraction you are making the boulder behind which you stand so that you can hide from love. Have courage. Have faith. Get proud. Not proud in an egoic way, but I'm talking about really invest a sense of confidence in yourself that says, I can do this. Get proud in yourself. Scoop that boulder over and at least give love a look. Was that the episode? I believe it was. Episode 41. I'm also going to revamp how I do these because I've been doing them better lately, but I got to go back in time and do it. Um, That's funny. I'm asking you to do that, and I'm about to switch gears because now we're leaving Do I Diddy. <laughs> and we're going to raise them up slash high why. Um, the high why portion is going to act more like the YN's words of wisdom. I'll get into that in depth in the YN's words of wisdom, but raise them up is where I edutain. I educate in an entertaining way. Um, some part of life that I feel I've learned to have some knack for, and it makes so much sense that I would do that because today we are going to answer a question that I actually answered on a zoom call for the alumni of 1500 sound Academy one of my baby babies from the first graduating class of 1500 Sound Academy, Isaiah uh, Jones, that Jones boy, 88 on Instagram, that Jones boy, 88 on Instagram, the two numbers, eight, um, asked a question. And this question is going to take itself back to who you love. Watch this. What do you do? that Jones Boy 88 asks, during low times as a creator in this industry, especially after experiencing the highs. Let me tell y'all, if anybody wants to join this music industry, the content creation industry, entertainment industry, entrepreneurial industry, if anybody wants to join us, a little walk on the wild side, you are going to experience the highest of highs and lots of lows. I need you to hear when I say lots of lows. 
and the lots of lows are all going to decorate your beginning. Your endurance of the lots of lows is going to be the hugest determinant in whether you ever experience your highest highs. Example, I leave high school getting ready to go to college. Wendy went to a performing arts school, so did TJ. Everybody 18 leaving while they're young and in shape and cute, going out getting record deals, they're getting on gigs with whoever the acts are. I've spoken on here about passing up the chance to go on tour with Snoop when I was 22 in order to do something that aligned with the degree I had just earned a couple months before. I can't say that I regret that decision, but I know my creative professional career took a different journey than another one of my great friends who ended up going, I was supposed to go with him and sing alongside him for Snoop. Um, he went out and hasn't stopped touring since. Not just with Snoop, with other acts as well. Like, you catch one, you go, you keep going. You keep finding the, the gigs. Um, or they keep finding you when, you're, when you start with someone like Snoop. Come on, guys. Um, so, I went the safe route. And I did what my school taught me, my schooling taught me, my degrees taught me. Um, Rocky, <laughs> start to the creative world because I didn't start my personal artistry, my creative artistry until 2019. So I released my first single as Nip was taking his victory lap around Los Angeles, around my birthday, 2019. And I thought about Nip. I've, to, I've spoken about this on the pod, but I don't want you guys to go searching for it. I thought about the fact that, Wyanna, you will go to your grave with all of these, like, six hours of music in your computer, and nobody's ever heard it. What did you create it for? What was your purpose? To do something that everyone who can go to school and earn a degree can do? Or to utilize the unique talent of singing, songwriting, and inspiring people that God put in you as a gift? Which is it? And it took a lot of experiencing highs. Because I was secure, you know, some people are going through like things like looking for jobs. How do I pay bills? And you're as talented as doggone Beyonce, Rihanna, and everybody else. Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? With my degree, I guaranteed on the economic side, I could only fall so far down a ladder. That was what I thought was smart after coming from two entertainers who I've seen life go up and down with. Um, the lows litter your beginning as a creative in this industry, as an entrepreneur, entertainment industry at large. Surviving the lows, that might be too deep. Surfing, make it adventurous. Surfing the waves of lows will earn you the privilege of experiencing the highs. It takes everything it takes for a relationship. Humbling spirit, dedication, commitment. You gotta like what you do. You gotta love what you do. There goes Sternberg's triangle. You gotta like it. You got to physically be passionate about it and you got to be committed to it. Problem, red flag, red flag. If your heart doesn't open because you create from ego, you create because nigga, I'm dope. Fuck you mean. 
If that's what I sing because oh, 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 I, I, when I leave a stage, my biggest takeaway I want the audience to know is that I'm that bitch. I'm I'm singing better than anybody out here. Some of my favorite singers are background singers. Most background singers on gigs can out sing the act. Don't play with Shaka though. That's not cute. Don't play with Shaka. Don't play with my mom. You're not out singing Wanda. Just chill. Like there's certain people, chill. Watch it. Watch it. All right. I did look, I had to, I had to <laughs> amend a few. Stop playing with Brandy. Don't do that. It, you gotta know who to play with, is all I'm saying. But a lot of the biggest acts, singers, their background singers sing circles around them. Straight up. That's just the way it goes. However, what I want to encourage all of my aspiring creatives, whether you're a creative in the entertainment field, the entrepreneurial field, because you're creating a solution to a world problem, and that's what an entrepreneur does. Um, however you're going about being a creative, the lows are to be expect. Expect the lows. They're here. They're coming. Palm trees last in a storm because of their flexible trunks and their ability to sway when the winds blow hard. Big, taller than and stronger than palm trees, an oak tree. An oak tree gets snapped in two by the storm. While it's bigger and stronger than the palm tree, it's also less flexible, more rigid. So when the winds of change come a blowing, you get broken. I need y'all to learn the dexterity of the flexibility in love. Love has no ego. Ego is rigid, tall, and strong. Well, it thinks it's strong. It's the most brittle, fragile, sensitive, sometimes ho-ass thing that you can have about you. Sometimes. Because there are positive functions to the ego. Have a whole episode with the masterminds on that. But learning to be flexible, making sure that Jones Boy 88, how do you navigate the low times, after you've experienced the high times, who do you love? Are you more in love with the big name act that's hired you? Or your ability to perform well for the big wig act that's hired you? Does your ego get bruised? when it makes perfect sense as an adult living in Los Angeles that you might have to get a nine to five job to supplement just the bills being paid if you want to stay living in LA while you look for more work in the industry? Does your ego take the hit? Or do you love yourself and know yourself well enough to be like, this is just a part of my journey? Hell, Coast Contra got discovered at their nine to five in my two cents. Coast Contra is a dope ass quadru uh, 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 quadrilateral of a group. I don't know why that came out. Um, it's a quartet of rappers, if you will. They're a group um, who have been killing all the new freestyles, all the old beats, but new freestyles. Um, one half of them are twins from hip hop royalty Raz Kaz and singing royalty Tidra Moses. Um, and the other two gentlemen are just as fucking rad. They are dope. They're awesome, the four of them together. You wouldn't want to see them in a cipher. They're, 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 they're kind of scary. They go up. Um, but they were all living together in an apartment, working a job, doing what they had to do to make ends meet, to have enough money to have money for studio time so that they could do it on their own if that's what they were going to do, Right? Um, that pride and that ego has to get tucked. You have to do what you have to do 
like the palm tree has to sway when it probably doesn't feel like swaying. But the storm is the storm. You move yourself with flexibility and with full knowledge of your self-worth and recognizing I, I'm doing this because I love me. I have to be good in order to be good as a business. And that's going to lead us in to the YN's words of wisdom. Because in answering this high why, I came up with some words of wisdom. Dear creatives, if you starve the person, you kill the persona. Dear creatives, entrepreneurs, everybody else, if you starve the person, you are going to kill the brand, the persona, the sole proprietorship, the partnership, the entrepreneur, the LLC, you're going to kill it. Whatever production, whatever thing that you're doing, if you ignore your being as a human, you are going to stop and stunt your doing as a human. I like to remind creatives of this because you hear about team no sleep. You hear about people who are like, you know what? I got to get it how I live. You understand? I'm a rapper. So, you know, I means I got to smoke hella weed. I drank. I drank. You know, new kids do different drugs. I don't really get into. Hey, to each his own. Um, your body remembers. One of the reasons I love being a podcaster, an edutainer, and a professor, an orator, a songwriter, a poet, an author, I love the fact that you can't unhear. It's one of the most gratifying things to know in human life. As a math educator for adults, I can't tell you how many of these 36-year-old students I would teach algebra who could recall their third grade educator's name and the exact phrase that they told them when they let the student who's now 36 and in my class know that they were a fucking idiot. Damn it, why can't you do anything right? It's fucking three times three. They might not have said the fucking part, but wherever they fell out of love with math early on, people said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I am not going to be made to feel like an idiot. I would rather leave. Joe Budden is a great example. I'm not saying that he had an incident like this. I am saying he is a multimillionaire who did not complete high school. Whatever was going on in high school, he didn't feel it. Nipsey, no, he a genius. He just can't claim it because they left him no platforms to explain it all going through school. We've talked about that several times on this podcast. When you're recognizing that you have something in you, you want to fortify that thing. I am telling you right now, whatever you're going through, if you start valuing the output of what you do as a human over the fact that you are a human, you are going to crash and burn. Your body never fucking forgets. Your body never forgets. Your memory never forgets. All of the uh, injunctions, we've talked about it on this podcast before, early childhood messages, injunctions, early childhood messages that you may not even realize your still carrying alongside you in adulthood because it influences how you make decisions as an adult. So when, you know, if you eat and go to sleep, you're going to be fat. I come from a household that did entertainment. I helped create a school for entertainers. <laughs> All of my friends mostly are in entertainment. 
your image and how people see you is almost today more important than your music or how you sound. People who've had trouble keeping a picture perfect body shape, figure, things like that, have often been told some things about their weight or weight management when they were young. So I'm making this up. You know, if you eat and lay down, you're going to be fat. The person who works all day only has bites to eat throughout the day and comes home sitting down for the first time in their home might not at 6 p.m. No, no, no. At 11 p.m., 2 a.m., that individual who has not had a meal yet that day might not take any food in because, shit, well, I don't want to do no fat shit. Wait, what? No, you haven't eaten all day. It's also not healthy to go to bed hungry. Did you know that? But that person who was telling you something for the reason they were telling, they didn't include that part. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a challenge. I, I, I've talked about it here um, where when I first was getting into the music industry and I'm 17 years old, one of the first requirements I had, and TJ has a similar story even younger. I think he was 13 in his story, I was 17 in my story, um, the record exec people who were producing my sister and me and the group that we were in got me a gym membership. Because they said, she, she's fucking amazing as a, as a vocalist. Now, uh, what is she going to do about her weight? I was the height I am now and 60, 70 pounds less. And they were like, ooh, whoa, she looked crazy because the camera adds 15 pounds or something like that that they were telling me. So what you do is to a young developing girl, you make her question. You don't make her. She's encouraged now to call into question anything she eats, anytime she eats, whether she's worthy of being if she hasn't been on a treadmill that day, if she hasn't been to the gym that day, if she doesn't get a workout in that day, is she still a worthy human being? Not a worthy singer, not a worthy artist, human being. That's an example of an injunction. I am telling y'all now, and we had talked about it a little last episode and I've been talking about it in love lounges. When I learned that outside of working out almost incessantly, <laughs> eating healthily, you see how I eat, you know that I eat. I, I just started actually feeding myself the proper amount of calories per day because I was under eating, even though I'm thick as fuck, right? And I say thick as fuck in a positive way. I'm not, I'm not self-hating or talking crazy on myself. I love myself too much for that now. I say now because that wasn't always the case. Keep it a stack, right? All right, cool. When I now look at making sure that I don't only work out, that I don't only eat as often as I should throughout the day and don't replace meals with coffee because I just got to keep going, I also now have started doing something that I had never done because I was always so busy, 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 busy. Seven and a half to nine hours of sleep. I was telling Love Dallas, Dal at Dallas Now What on Insta. I was telling Love Dallas last night, I did not lose one pound. No, literally one pound until I started sleeping seven and a half to nine hours consistently, period. He was like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, you can look on my Instagram throughout the years since the pandemic. I was walking six miles per day. I was this, that, but it wasn't until 
like one of my, two of my former students told me, I sat my happy ass down somewhere <laughs> and I learned to fucking rest. Rest is the highest evidence of your trust in the divine. If you don't know how to rest, you are telling God, I don't trust what you got going for my life. I think I'm more important, so let me do it. This is for all my overachievers. If you're a lazy fuck, don't worry about this part. But if you are an overachiever, an extroverted, extraordinary, always having to do the fuck something, this is for you. And let me help you out. Dear creators, if you starve the person, you starve the persona. Watch how self-love and who do you love. You, you determine who you love when you look at the top three causes for death in Americans at the adult level is heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. And if you're in the black community, diabetes is actually number one. Then heart disease, then cancer. All right, cool. Check this out. Heart disease is evidence of a person living life devoid of paying attention to what their heart actually desires in this life. And if that's the number one killer of adults in America, not in the black community, I'm talking about all over the country, think of how many people are doing life on a mental hamster wheel they do all the things, they go to school, get the 2.5 kids, get married, get the degrees, get the debt that goes along with it, work your dick off to try to get out of the debt, to put yourself into more debt. Maybe you transfer the debt, you buy the house, come into more debt, you don't have a diversified portfolio, you think you're going to live for the weekend. The only, time you're, the only time you acknowledge happy is during that hour, which means you take in alcohol to numb yourself. Welcome to adulthood. And a lack of giving a, a, a genuine fuck about your heart and your passions, things that make you feel fulfilled in this life. That's the majority, clearly, of Americans. All right, there go heart disease. A lack of paying attention to the passion of the self. Who do you love? Cancer. This is a lack of awareness in the self. A lack of awareness in the self. Dr. Gabor Mate trauma doctor and a physician combined experience about five decades. You can check this dude out on YouTube clips and things like that speaks about the difference between cancer uh, patients who survived their cancer diagnoses versus ones who cancer became a terminally ill process for people who learned about their diagnosis and started to worry about other people and didn't focus on their own recovery. You have these many months to live or you, you know, you got to start doing these things and, oh my God, what will my husband think? How will my kids do this and that? How will, how will, and you start to abandon yourself. You will 100% probability, 100% probability have a more challenging time with your diagnosis or your prognosis rather of a cancer diagnosis um, versus someone who hears that they have these challenges in their life called cancer and then actually start doing things about it. It's also a neglect for self talking about who do you love? It's a neglect for self because one doctor said getting less amount of sleep. I talked about sleep. Eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, two hours, three hours, five hours. In those days that you don't get that seven and a half to nine hours sleep, your body doesn't do the natural counter to cancer cells. A healthy body, every, everybody's body creates cancer cells. It's natural. The way your body doesn't succumb to cancer is that by rest and relaxation, especially sleep, you generate healthy cells that counteract cancer cells. It's an act of balance. So when your team no sleep and you feel like I got to do, I got to do, I can't be, 
you actively create an imbalance. And by doing so, cancer wins. You neglect yourself. So who do you love? When you're looking at the idea of cancer, cancer is the disease of the abandoned self. Number three, diabetes. When you're dealing with diabetes, you are looking at the individual who lives an unsweet life. An unsweet life. A lot of these diseases, these three top killers of America, require an individual to live from the shoulders up. Just like we talked about with love, people would rather overanalyze, criticize, and think about love than come below their shoulders, come down in their bodies, and actually try something with their heart. Give your heart a try. Actually rest into the feeling of your body. Do some yoga. Learn which side is stronger and which side kind of has a little hitch in its step. It's natural, but do you even know which one it is and what it looks like? Coming to, back to diabetes, when you take time to put things in your body and you only have a propensity to eat things that break down into sugar or are sweet, one physician, gynecological doctor, described people who are addicted to sugar, all Americans, by the way, I don't know about any other place because I've only lived here and I've only studied here, but Almost all Americans are addicted to sugar. Almost every molecule breaks down into sugar. I think protein is the exception. But when it comes to your body, we have fat because fat is like a palm tree. It's malleable, it's light, and it can tuck and store a lot of shit places. So when you're eating candy and Frito-Lays and pastries and donuts and if you want to call it food fast food and you're eating these things fat not only is what happens to unused energy molecules called calories it's also insulating and trying to protect you from the toxins you pour into it i don't give a fuck because i'm just drinking smoking the new drugs that the kids is doing, any of those things, the fat on your, you can be thin and have these issues. Thin does not equal healthy. Healthy equals healthy. A balanced life is balanced. Not the new age. Well, if you take and borrow from three hours of sleep over here, do this and that. Consult a physician and a dietitian, nutritionalist, and some people who actually know about food science and what's going into your body. Check bioresonance and physics doctors and practicers of spirit and actual vibration, bioresonance, things like that, so that you actually understand the balance of the entire cosmos and how you play a part in it. Because if you are distracted by even a creator's rat race, studio time, drinking and fucking, what I got on, what do I got that shit on, who am I fucking, who's with them, oh, that nigga didn't call me back, the fuck you mean? All distractions. Dear creatives, starve your person, you will kill your persona. Ain't no, hi, I'm YM Vaughn. Raise it up, why? Ain't none of that if Wyan at home doesn't treat herself right, treat herself kind, and do well by herself. What you're putting into your body, whether it's sweet or not, includes what you're putting into your body via your eyes. What is that timeline? What does that timeline look like? What is the music? What are the podcasts? What are you putting into your body? What conversations do you invest a lot of time in? What words are you not unhearing? All of that contributes to your unsweet life, which is why we have a propensity to eat hella sweets and diabetes dear creatives keep starving the human being you will not for a long time be a human doing 
If you starve the person, you will starve the persona. Pay attention to your heart. The desires of it. Where you sit, hopefully you're there. Some people care about getting a Grammy more than they care about making sure their ass is clean. Cooking for yourself is an act of self-love. Stay your ass home some days. Sit your busy body ass down somewhere. Close your knees. Get in touch with yourself. Be with yourself. Learn yourself. Rule number one, open your heart. Why play the game if you ain't down to start? If you're not open in your heart, get a pen and a pad and journal. Find the fuck out why. Watch more Raise It Up Why. Learn about yourself. If you want something more serious, go look at content creators and book time with people like Urban Understore urban underscore counselor or at Zeb the third. So you can start understanding what you're doing in this body, in this heart. Is there balance? Are you sweet inside you? These are the types of things that are going to have longevity and keep you going for the long run before I go. If you don't know what I'm doing, it's all for you do. Huh. News. Hey, come on, yodel. <laughs> Pay your dues. First and foremost, I would like to thank God, the creator of all things. No, 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 no. First and foremost, I'm always giving love to at. Hair by Quista, H A I R B Y Q U I S T A, my hair lady, my one and only hair lady. And we use the products I love to do more than you knew. I L O V E T H E D O U X at I love the do. Um, to give a little shine, I poured in some misdemeanor. I didn't pour it, I sprayed it. <laughs> um, I was at a spot. Nordstrom's Rack is selling the do now. And I saw something there that I didn't see at Target. So leaving the Fox Hills Mall, I was getting some of that. And I go to the front, and it's a black boy and a, a, a black woman right there. And I'm just saying a black young man. But he had some pretty, pretty curly hair. And he looked at it because, you know, my hair is out. He was like, oh, hey. I says, hey, that's my cousin. He said, you lying. I said, nope. I said, that's my cousin right there. And her products are that shit. So both of y'all. Go ransack the area. They was like, where's that okay? So I told them I would shout them out. Didn't get none of their names. Didn't tell them mine because I didn't have on no makeup. I look crazy. Um, At Wava Life, W-A-V-A-L-I-F-E. The parents of my nephew, Carter Water Vaughn. I call him Carter Water. Ooh. Yeah, right? Um, If you aren't in the know... Wava is my baby brother, Warren Vaughn's probiotic company. Shoot, they make beverages and foods all around Southern California, everywhere from Calabasas and Palisades to Altadena now, the new the new markets, uh, Manhattan Beach uh, in, in Tuesdays. They do Larchmouth still? Because they've changed some Larchmouth, Burbank. No more playa. No more playa. But at Wava Life, go on their Instagram at W-A-V-A-L-I-F-E and make sure that you look up and see where they is at next to you and get you some of that good Wava Life juice in your life. Number three, at Bruxy Waffles, B U R. B-U-R? No, my dyslexia kicked in. <laughs> I put the sexy in dyslexia. Um, so, B-R-U-X-I-E-W-A-F-F-L-E-S. And I think I'm going to go there tomorrow. I eat there once a week. I, I'm not, I don't play with them. It's the best chicken and waffles in Los Angeles right now. I'm sorry, it is. <gasps> okay, well, we'll do that. But no, no, no you haven't had them yet. Huh? You have in real life? Okay, never mind. I still go to 
I'm hungry right now. I'm not going to front with you. We're going to make a pizza. Okay, so here's the thing. Bruxy Waffles has a new location right there in the LBC. Boo. Bruxy time in the LBC. LBC. I don't, I'm not good at gang members. So, okay, yes, Bruxy Waffles, new location in Long Beach City. Make sure you are on their Instagram for all of their locations. It's the best chicken and waffles in Southern California. Talk to me nice. Go look if you don't believe me. Let me know that you tried it at Raise It Up Why. Um, I'll put the spelling in just a second. Um, number four. We had the pleasure. I smell so good. Hey, no. Onet and I smell so good right now. It's just us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't nobody here that we doing this for. Hey, let me tell you something. At Pamper, the letter U products. At Pamper, the letter U products. Our girl, Tanasa Ingram, right here in the 60s. No, that's the L.A. thing. But uh, off Crenshaw. Nope, 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 nope. I said that. Now I'm thinking of Nip. No, off of Slauson. Hello. And it's right by Issa Rae's Cafe. Find Your Hilltop on Instagram at Find Your Hilltop. It's directly across from there. Um, Pamper, you look, this smells good. I can smell it. Through this, let me tell y'all something. I need to go out somewhere, okay? It's late as fuck, but I'm still cute. So is uh, Onet over there. Let me tell y'all, if you are in the Southern California area and the 60s, and you're okay to be in that area and on that side of town, I'm trying to tell y'all, you have to let Tanasa know, the owner of At Pamper You Products, Go in there, tell her that you heard about her amazing scents. Everything from she can make custom hand lotions to diffused oils to what uh, Yumi and um, Onet Wyan and Susie got was oils and sprays. So like a little refresher spray, just a little something to let niggas know I'm not playing out here. I'm her. <laughs> that oil though, that my God on today. You had one right at the end where I was like, oh, no. We'll go back. And then we'll do the three. The three for the discount. Okay, cool. At Pamper You Products, expect to see us again. Because, uh, no, it's just a really, really dope spot. Um, the woman, Tanasa Ingram, is just... I mean, gosh, she's such a pretty human. Like, the whole... That whole experience was, like, second to none. I'm telling you in real life. Like, I felt... That was such a happy accident. We didn't plan to go over there. Nah, I love her. I'm And I'm going to go uh, tomorrow. Um, well, I'm going to the Hilltop spot, but I'll, I'll also go over and see her and let her know that we did this for her. Um, number five, at, not at Love Culture. I should do one, actually. But no, at The Carrington Jackson on Instagram. The Carrington Jackson, a.k.a. Love Messy Boots. All Zs, where there should be Ss. Love Messy Boots decided to do a remix to my song, Scales, that was on the YN EP from 2019. He did such a good job. I am telling y'all, don't walk. Run to your nearest web browser. Hit soundcloud.com slash Carrington Jackson. Go to his page. Check out the messy mix. The remix of scales it's so good carrington i am so proud of you i i listened to it and the entire time my I, my jaw dropped you haven't heard it yet I'll, I'll let you hear it wendy cried and tj said what the, what the fuck what the fuck is this i'm like man listen it's just messy boots not playing no games last but never least at Raise It Up Y across all platforms, at R-A-I-S-E-I-T-U-P-W-Y. If you put that in Google, everything related to Y and Vaughn will come up, all right? Um, come join us in the Love Lounge on Instagram, Tuesday nights for sure, 
And we will be doing YouTube lives and starting love lounges over there. Um, by the time you hear this, we should have already started because that's my deadline to myself. Hold myself accountable. Couple dates. Um, November 3, my homeboy Ty Cannon. It's his birthday today. Ew. At Vibes by Tyheem, T-Y-H. Tyheem, I-E-M. Uh, Vibes by Tyheem. On November 3rd, it's a karaoke night that I'm hosting. Ladies, come out. All right. It's called Ladies Night. It is not just for ladies. I want to see some niggas in there. Hello? All right. We are going to do a sing-along. My mom felt so good doing it. She even thinking coming. So I'm like, she's even thinking of coming. So I'm pretty sure if you get Wanda Vaughn out there singing, watch for the real. Watch for the, I've already shot something for the promo of this. Watch for the real. My mom is a beast. I got to remember sometimes how in Incredible she is, yo. Ah! Like, it's not real. Okay. Um, number two date. What am I doing? November 18th, um, The Emotions will be at the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California for the Always and Forever tour. Well, it's a show date. Um, headliners, I think, is the Shy Lights and the Stylistics. Under them is Heat Wave and the Emotions. And there's a whole lot of acts under us. I just can't remember who they are. So please go check at The Emotions Legacy on Instagram, all spelled correctly. And you can see that real or at Bobby D Presents. And that's where all the information is. Tickets are on sale now. I hope you guys get to come see us because my mom going to show out. I already know her. She, she Listen, all them groups, she ain't going to play. She there for blood. I get it. I get it. Um, and TJ Wilkins' uh, show, the uh, At 44 Obama Musical, will still be running. The last day of theirs is the same day as the Emotions show. So please make sure you go before November 18th, right here in sunny Los Angeles, California. I say that because it's been 80-something, damn near 90 degrees every day still. It was 90? Where? Oh, Hambra. Because you guys are so far east. We're west. So it was 86, even though it still said it was only supposed to be 80. Or 83, excuse me. And it was 86. Yep. So, um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, those dates. November 3rd, come party with me as I do the karaoke night-ish. It's not karaoke. It's sing-along. He going to be spinning. I'm going to just be singing along. Hello. Uh, November 18, The Emotions, tickets at Bobby D, D-E-E, -E, presents. Um, Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y. Come on, guys. Uh, and make sure you're looking at at 44 Obama Musical, all spelled like you would think it's spelled. Um, link in bio, get tickets while you can. There are some special dates with special guests coming you are going to be in for a treat. Ladies and gents, I said we was going to do 50 minutes. I lied. A little longer. A little stronger. I'm just appreciative that I have such beautiful humans that decide to allow little thick West Coast chick to talk her shit in their ear, in their ear hole, or in y'all eye holes, if you watching on YouTube. <laughs> I just appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, I'm getting you all's uh, holiday merch together. I was telling that to Carrington. Um, be looking out for that in the next two episodes as the year is coming to a close. 2023 is... There's only two two more actual episodes and then my 13th episode of the year. Of course, I only do on YouTube, but this motherfucker left. It's out of here, bro. Episode 62 in the can. Appreciation, love to each of you. When I ask you, who do you love? The question better be your motherfucking self. Hear that. Hear me and hear me clearly. All right? Thank you for your time. Stay real. I said, say real, y'all. Boom, clap. Do, 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 do. Hey, do, do, do. Raise it up.